John, it's a pleasure to meet you here today. Can you tell us about the National Nutrition Research Centre here in Carriganore? Yes, the, the Nutrition Research Centre Ireland is it's a recent development which we're all very proud of here in, in Waterford IT. Um, it's an idea whereby we've brought together experts that have a core interest in nutrition. So it's across multidisciplinary areas of, of, of nutrition and these experts now have joined as part of this centre where they'll perform their research projects. Um, everything from looking at the role of nutrition for the eye and brain to the role of nutrition for performance health and so on so there's, there's it's multidisciplinary but um, we have an infrastructure now that supports young researchers um, where they can work towards their own PhDs hopefully become research leaders themselves grow their own research ideas and um, currently you know a lot of the work that I'm responsible for is looking at the role of nutrients called carotenoids and carotenoids are very interesting nutrients because they come from nature they're plant pigments and what we know about them is that there's about 700 of them in nature. So when you look at the colours in fruits and vegetables, for example, or in birds' feathers, those colours have to come from somewhere. And those colours are from these pigments called carotenoids. But what's really interesting about carotenoids is they have um, antioxidant potential. So basically they can function like sunscreen. And what we know is that they live in all across the body in tissues, and typically in fat tissues. And my work has shown in the eye and in the brain that there's three carotenoids in particular, lutein, zeaxanthin, and mesozeaxanthin, that we've figured out how to optimize in the eye and in the brain. And what we show now, and what we've shown in, in gold standard clinical trials, is that if you enrich these pigments in a certain way, you can achieve functional benefits across different populations. I'm one of the principal investigators here and uh, my background of research is in substance misuse and addiction. Um, and within the substance misuse strand of this centre, um, there are three elements. Um, one of them is the misuse of medicines um, and sort of looking at pharmacovigilance and pharmacoepidemiology. Um, and we're really lucky that this part of the centre is registered uh, on the NCEP network uh, of the European Medicines Agency. So we're one of the, there's 27 centres in Europe that are, are part of this network and we meet once a year to look at medicine safety and I suppose my expertise would be addiction to medicines and the misuse of medicines, uh, you know, the use of medicines for the wrong reasons, excessive use of medicines and things like that. Um, examples of that would be the opioid painkillers uh, or benzodiazepines. <laughs> So a whole range of areas uh, uh, will be covered within the centre. But what I think is, again, is very exciting is that the disciplines that are going to be encompassed within the centre include what you might call hard scientists, people who do things like measure cognitive function. Uh, we've got sociologists within the centre. We've got psychologists within the centre. So they'll be bringing their collective knowledge onto specific issues and this is particularly important uh, for Ireland PLC because one of the issues that we have faced into under the Horizon 2020 programme which is the largest research uh, funding programme in the world. Ireland, whilst we've been doing well, we need to do better and one of the issues that's been identified as why we're not doing as well as we would hope is that we're not very good at bringing together multidisciplinary research teams to look at a, 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 an issue. We're very good at the unidisciplinary viewing of a problem, but bringing a sociologist to get to work with um, a biologist in looking at, a, a, at an issue is something that we're not so good at at the moment. The NRCI uh, is taking on that challenge and I think will uh, prove to be a model exemplar as to how you can get multidisciplinary teams from different academic backgrounds to work together to solve uh, a major uh, social and uh, human issue. John, it is really, truly fantastic to have this facility here in Waterford and for the southeast region as well. What does it mean to you yourself? Yeah, personally for me and my family, I think it's, it's and my colleagues, I think it's, it's very important and it's very special. And 
and we're very proud of it. Um, and you know, ironically, I'm a um, I was successful as a Fulbright Scholar back in 2005 when I finished my own PhD. And my, my claim in that application to the Fulbright Commission was that I was going to go to America to learn new skill sets uh, in, in my area of research, which is macular pigment research, and return to Waterford. Because I truly believed even at that time that world-class research can be done anywhere if you have the right people, the right ideas, and the right infrastructure. And now that we live in a world of email and internet, you know, it's a small world. So I can be in laboratories anywhere in the world in a second to, to collaborate and discuss the research questions with various um, experts. So Waterford now, thankfully, has become one of the leading centres in, in that regard for macular pigment research and the role of these carotenoids for human health. Thank <laughs> you.